Hi, this is the first video in a small series I'm gonna be doing uh, that'll show people who are familiar with uh, game development and 3D modeling and stuff like that, or at least the the, be the beginner the beginner level uh, people how to go through the whole process of creating an asset. Um, Sculpting it in ZBrush, texturing it in um, Substance Painter, and then presenting it in, uh, I guess, Marvel set. So I was thinking about what kind of object uh, or character I was gonna prepare, and I I figured it would be easiest to create something that is somewhat organic and hard surface at the same time, and has simple enough shapes to just go through the whole um through all the steps without the whole process getting too convoluted so i really like diablo and i play heroes of the storm and so i thought it might be cool to uh, create a prop from one of the characters there and um there's a character called the butcher in uh, diablo and heroes of the storm and he he has a a hatchet, a cool looking hatchet. So I'll show you the concept. Butcher weapon. There we go. All right. So here you have it. So I'm not gonna model the actual character. I'm gonna focus on. The, the weapon, the hatchet, kind of cool looking. And instead of doing it exactly like, like it is in the concept, I'll make it a little bit, maybe a little bit um, less cartoony, a little bit more realistic. Um, so sort of in between there uh, is how I'll approach it. Okay, so usually what the first thing I do is I'll look for a bunch of reference images and then block something out in uh, in Blender and then bring it into ZBrush to sculpt the high poly. Um, so that's what I'll do. So here we have, uh, I opened a Blender scene and I'm gonna get rid of all the objects in it. I'm just gonna rearrange quickly a little bit my menus. Uh, Oh um, man, I always forget how that works. All right, it's because, yeah. There we go. And then there we go. And we're gonna basically move my properties panels to the left. That's something you, you can save as your default, but I keep forgetting to do that. So properties and then outliner. There we go. And then I usually set the outliner to just show the, the layer. The layers there. We go. So that once we, it's not gonna be a problem for this project, but once you get like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of objects in your scene, you'll have this massive list here. And I, I like to keep it short. So that this way it'll only show what is in the active layer. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> so, how do we start this? Um, let's think about this for a second. So we have. I'm looking on on my other screen at the the concept. Uh, hold on, there we go. <clears throat> we have a kind of a, an animal skull. You know, it's kind of like something, like a demonic cow. Or something, and then the actual blade. Bones, I think, and that's that's it. So, looking at some other views, to get a better idea. This is the actual model. And this is a concept, and so I can see some more things. 
Um, <clears throat> so we got one, two, three, four, five. About five unique pieces of um, bone. And they're uniquely shaped, I believe, yeah. Then this is wood, and then at the end of the wood you have a little, I think a piece of metal or something like that. Uh, I'll, I'll load up my Heroes of the Storm in a bit and take some screenshots of the actual asset so that I have different views. But I think I can go ahead and block it out in uh, Blender. So how do I go about this? Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that my my Blender may look a little bit different from yours and that is basically just uh, UI colors. And then you'll see as I work that some of my uh, shortcuts and stuff are a little bit different as well. Um, and I use some plugins, uh, which I've listed in previous uh, videos, I think. So, but I'll, I'll mention them anyway. So let's see, let's start with a cube. Usually how I start, do, 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 do mesh, there we go. And, I think it would be best to start blocking out the blade. So let's see. So split this up. Okay, so I'm using uh, not the default pine menus, but a little bit more advanced pine men menus from uh, what's his name? Piti Wazoo, I think. I'll link it in the description. So it has a whole bunch of additional pie menus like this stuff. Um, and if I right click uh, instead of placing the cursor, uh, in this case, it brings up this menu uh, with a whole bunch of additional stuff. If I press Control S, um, I get kind of all kinds of export and saving options. So it's it's a little bit deeper and more advanced. You don't need this at all uh, to do what I'm about to do, but I do recommend to, to use it because it you'll get used to working in that way and then it'll save you some time. All right, so let's, uh, so what I can do here is I can add a mirror um, or I can, what, what you'll see me do mostly is doing something like this. Uh, oh, hey man. Uh, Something like, oh, I forgot my shortcuts. Ah, wait a minute, this is a bug. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is one of the the add-ons that I'm using also from the same developer, Piti Wazoo. And uh, it basically has a whole bunch of modifiers that you can pick here, but it's in a menu. So instead of building the modifier here, I'll press here, right there. So this just saves me some time, but for some reason, I think while I'm recording OBS, um, the menu doesn't really pop up properly. So, okay, let's see. So the blade is gonna be at least, the way we're gonna block it out is gonna be symmetrical uh, on the X axis, and I'm gonna, um, Model it that way for now. All right, so go to vertex and wireframe. <clears throat> so it's it's been a while now since I actually been modeling and uh, mostly been spending time working in ZBrush and Substance. So. And I'm not um, a veteran Blender user. I've only started using it about a year ago. So it, I, I forget uh, <laughs> I forget some shortcuts. Uh, so you, if you see me struggling a little bit, it's because I'm still somewhat of a noob in Blender. And I have to jump for my job between uh, Maya as well. And so... I'm using Maya for a while, I start getting used to the Maya shortcuts and then, yeah, so it's just, yeah, not a big deal. Um, this is usually one of the things that people uh, kind of use as an excuse not to want to learn Blender because 
there's a lot of there's it's a different workflow the the shortcuts are different and the navigation is different than what they might be used to in Maya or Max and they don't want to learn something new uh, that is that drastically different but I believe that in, in the end so in the end it like at least for me it, it totally paid off um, so how does this attach this is just blocking out the blade super roughly <coughs> so I want to see how does this actually attach to the I think the blade mostly attaches to the stick to the handle because of the skull and I'm gonna block out the skull next so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this object and go into face because by duplicating it I, I keep the mirror setup you know and the symmetry so it, the shape is different but not not such a big deal it's not the poly count of the blade at this point is so low that it's easy to manipulate it oh if I scaled it and then it screwed up the okay so how do I go about scaling this without screwing up the, the symmetry so if I do it like this it's gonna screw it up but if I now uh, press uh, not X that's the wrong one so X is the axis I don't want to scale on so I scale on Z and Y and if I want to scale on both uh, I think what I do if I remember correctly is as I'm scaling I'm pressing shift Z no uh, okay I think I <laughs> there's a way to eliminate the the axis that you don't want so shift X yeah there we go so now by pressing shift X I'm el eliminating the X axis and I'm only scaling on the Y and the Z axis. All right, so that was a bit of a waste of time, but we'll remember that for the future. So let's see. Yes. And also, it's not such a big deal to fuck up the symmetry, you know? Uh, like, we'll, we'll be able to fix that very easily later um you know what i'm just gonna get rid of some of these or maybe that then edge collapse so this is again uh, advanced pie menu um and I'm, so i'm all i'm doing is pressing x if you don't have this pie menu and you press x you have pretty much the same options but not in the pie menu it'll just be like in a in one of these menus so what I did here is I just selected the edge rings um, and you select edge rings by doing control alt and then clicking on one of the edges and then I'm basically edge collapsing them just to simplify and I'll do the same here edge collapse bam. and now, now I have a lot more geometry to mess around with um, all right so this most of this will be manipulated and changed in ZBrush and to have something blocked out proportionally and I just need some volumes and arguably I could create those volumes in ZBrush as well <clears throat> and sometimes I do but this process kind of helps me um, work maybe a little bit cleaner and it helps me understand a little bit the object I'm making um, and it's just harder to do that it's harder to get a sense of scale in ZBrush than it is in a 3D application so let's leave it like this I think yeah okay um, should I do the horns? Well, let's do the stick. 
So the stick, how are we gonna do the stick? I think for the stick, let's make a cylinder. Mm, think how many eight? Yeah, eight should be fine. Okay, so so this doesn't have uh, symmetry on it at the moment. And then when I'm snapping to like a view, I'm just as by moving the camera and then holding down Alt and it snaps. Uh, and I am in the orthographic view, so the switch you just press five, and now I'm orthographic. So, I suppose that the um, hover is about this size over it, alright, I suppose that this fits in, or is supposed to fit into the skull. <coughs> yes. Again, not too worried about making this look good or making this even accurate. Just about having the shape that I can then manipulate in uh, that brush. Okay, so. I believe that what happens is that here it starts like veering down and then goes kind of back up. And I think it's supposed to end here. <coughs> okay. So maybe. I'll leave it like that, I think. I think that's fine. Um, so normally what's gonna happen if, if I bring this into ZBrush, um, the distribution of the quads or the polygons is very, uh, it's not very even. There's no even distribution. Um, so if I, when I, when I'll subdivide that in ZBrush, it'll just, get really messy and I'll show you that uh, also like I have um, non quad faces on this and it's just gonna get messy uh, but I'm not worried about that now because I'll mainly be using um, I'll mainly be using Dynamesh which you'll see will kind of ignore that issue so here here we go here we have our first step uh, as stupid as this is looking um, it's going to give us a head start in ZBrush, which will be the next step.